Hello. In the last class, we have discussed design of shaft supporting a spur gear and a flat belt pulley. Today, what we'll discuss in this session is that how to design a shaft which is supporting a helical gear and a V-belt pulley. The example problem that we are considering for this case is the same example that I have mentioned in the workbook which has been supplied to you. Okay. So the the same referring the same example problem, we'll try to draw the layout. You read the same example problem at the same time to draw the layout. I will explain you the layout how it has been drawn. So here I will explain you how the layout has been drawn. So there there are two bearings B and D, 200 mm apart that which has been mentioned in the problem. Okay. So we have drawn two bearings, one at B and one at D, which are 200 mm apart. In between the bearing is a helical pinion which is located at point C and that point C is around 100 mm from one of the bearings. So we have drawn a helical pinion at point C at 100 mm from one of the bearings. Okay. The helical pinion is transferring power to a helical gear which is located horizontally in front. So we, are, we have drawn a helical gear horizontally in front of helical pinion C. Okay. To the left of your bearing B at 120 mm is a V-belt pulley which is receiving power from some shaft which is located, located somewhere here. The belt tensions in the V-belt pulley are horizontal. So we have drawn the belt tensions horizontal as shown here. The distance is 120 mm. So we have mentioned the distance as well as 120 mm. Okay. So this is for the layout. To try to draw the layout on your own referring the example problem, problem which has been given in the workbook. Let us now discuss what all has been mentioned in the problem. So what has been given is power as 40 kW and the speed of the shaft is 380 rpm. We have to assume a direction in the layout as anti in the anti-clockwise sense. The rotation of the shaft we have considered to be in the anti-clockwise sense. This rotation you can change to clockwise as well depending upon your convenience. We have to assume here anti-clockwise since nothing was mentioned in the design problem which has been given to us. Okay. Next is the details of the pulleys are being mentioned. So the driving pulley which is located on another shaft okay, is around 160 mm in diameter and the driven pulley which is located on the shaft to be designed, the shaft which we are designing is 400 mm. The diameter of that pulley is 400 mm and the distance between these two pulleys is 500 mm. Coefficient of friction between the belt and the pulley is 0.38 which is being mentioned in the problem again. Now angle of contact we need to calculate. What should be the angle of contact for the pulleys? So if we try to draw considering the drive to be the open belt drive, so you will see something like this. This pulley is located on the shaft which we are designing and this pulley is the pulley which is transferring the power to our pulley. Okay. So the smaller pulley will be obviously the one which is transferring the power. Okay. And from the dimensions also you can get to know that the smaller pulley is the one which is transferring the power. Okay. We are interested only on the tensions which are coming on coming on this pulley. So to get the tensions we should know the angle of lap. But the angle of lap is always to be calculated on the smaller pulley or the driven pulley because the angle of lap there is less which will be com coming out to be 180 minus 2 alpha and in case of your driver pulley it comes out to be 180 plus 2 alpha. So here the chances of slip are more because of high, high speed as well as lesser angle of contact. Hence we always take it on the smaller pulley. So which comes out to be 180 minus 2 alpha. Alpha which come is sine inverse of d minus d over 2c. This equation I have given you in the earlier class. So you can refer there also and substituting the values which has been mentioned we get out what alpha comes out to be is around 13.88 degrees and 0.2422 radians. From there we can calculate the angle of lap which comes out to be 2.65 radians. Okay. Next thing is for the V-belt pulley one thing comes extra is that the groove angle. In case of your flat belts, there was nothing such as the groove angle, but here we have a groove angle for the V belts because the cross section is trapezoidal and the total angle that comes out to be is 2 beta for standard V belts and it is around 40 to 45 degrees. We assume it to be 40 degrees. In, in that case, your beta comes out to be 20 degrees. Okay. Now let us check, uh, check the details of the gear which are being mentioned in the problem. So there is a helical pinion which is being mounted on the sh uh, shaft which we are designing. So the module of that helical pinion is 6 mm and the number of teeth are 20. Pressure angle is 20 degrees. Helix, helix angle is 13 degrees and the hand of helix is being mentioned which is right hand helix. If the hand of helix is not mentioned in the problem, you can assume a hand of helix to be the right hand helix or a left hand helix. Now the diameter of the pinion, since it's a helical gear, comes out to be m 
module into number of teeth over cos beta. This equation you will find it on PhD 8.22. Substituting the values, what you will get the diameter of the helical pinion as 125 degrees. Now, in order to de design the shaft, we should know the forces acting on the shaft. But prior to that, we should know what is the power and the what is the torque which is coming on the shaft. So, for that, we design always we design the shaft for a higher power, not on the power which has been given in the design. Because in case of power fluctuations, if the power increases, that the the shaft will always be safe. In that case, we consider a factor called as the service factor. This we have already seen in the class how to calculate the service factor which is being mentioned on PhD 7.69. So you can refer there and assuming a application if not given in the problem you can calculate the service factor. So here in our case no application was given so we have assume an application general purpose application and service factor comes out to be 1.1. On that basis we calculate the design power which is the motor power into the service factor. So the design power comes out to be 44 kilowatts substituting the values from the earlier equations. Next part is to calculate the torque which is coming on the shaft. Now if you see the layout, the shaft is receiving power from a pulley and then the same power, entire power is it is transferring to through the helical gear. So here there is no deviation or no stepping of torque occurring between the shaft, okay, between any of the components of the shaft. So whatever the shaft is receiving it is entirely transferring through the helical pinion. We are assuming that the friction losses in this case are negligible. In that case the torque that we calculate on the torque the, uh, on the shaft will be same throughout. So the torque will be this equation we have already derived in the class. So substituting the values here you can get the torque which is acting on the shaft. Having calculated the design torque, now we can analyze what are the forces at different points or different uh, loading points which on the shaft. So our loading point is one at A and other one is at the helical gear point C. Okay, so first we'll discuss what happens at point A. So at point A we have a driven pulley which is receiving power from some another pulley which is located horizontally in front. We have to assume that the belt tensions are acting to the right of the shaft. Okay. So here this is our driven pulley which we have drawn at point A. The dimensions are given in the problem which are 400 and 160 mm. The ratios of the belt tensions for a V belt comes out to be E raised to mu theta divided by sin beta. This we have already discussed in the class. So substituting now the values we have discussed what was the theta how to calculate the theta and the beta values. You can substitute those values and you can get the belt tensions which are occurring on the pulley. So TT and TS comes out to be 10.22. You can have one of the equation from there TT minus 10.22 TS as 0. The other equation will be the torque which is occurring on the pulley can be taken as the net tension. Net tension which is acting on the pulley and the net tension comes out to be the difference of the two tensions. So the net tension or the net force in the, into the radial distance will give you the torque which is acting on the pulley. So the other equation that I can write is MT can be written as Tt minus Ts into radius of pulley and radius of pulley is being mentioned since we are designing the shaft we are designing this shaft so we will take the pull radius of this pulley so what you will have is torque we have already calculated Tt minus Ts into radius of pulley will give you one equation of Tt minus Ts solving these two equations what you will get is Tt and Ts now what you see is when we shift these forces at the center of the shaft what you will have is the net force that will be acting at the center will be Tt plus Ts Obviously we have neglected down the couple effect which is coming out because on shifting TT you will have a couple along with TT in one of the sense and on shifting TS you will have a TS as well as one couple but those two couples will cancel out and what will remain is only TT plus TS. So what you will have is the net force which is acting in the horizontal direction in the shaft it will be TT plus TS and that comes out to be this value. Now the net horizontal force we have calculated which was coming out to be Tt plus Ts. The net vertical force which was acting on our pulley will be zero because the weight of the pulley was not mentioned and the belt tensions were acting only horizontal. So the net vertical force at A comes out to be zero. Now what we will do is the force analysis of the helical gear which was being mounted at the point C. So if you see the point C you can have this helical pinion. We call it as a pinion because it is transferring the power to another gear. So here there is a pinion at point C which is right hand helix which is being mentioned in the problem. So obviously it will mesh with the left hand helix gear.